So what do I do? Basically, in a, a, a couple sentences, work with people and their ideas, give them some resources, and help change the world. And actually, you help us do that. How many people have ever uh, bought or sold real estate in BC? Thank you. Thank you so much. Because every transaction that you make, the deposit that goes into an income trust account, we, we get that interest for that 30 days. And we go and chase it all around every community, every transaction in BC. And then we have about $3 million a year, and we invest it back out into communities, into nonprofits, local governments, social enterprises around the, the province. And that's our funding model. First jurisdiction in North America to do it. Now Alberta has uh, copied us, but that is about it. We work in uh, sustainable built environment, sustainable land use, and sustainable fresh water. And if you think about it, what we eat, what we drink, and what we call, where we call home are pretty fundamentally important. And that's what we're working on. So today I want to uh, talk about a, a few things. As a funder, what am I looking for in projects? And why ecosystem services? But first I thought I'd, I'd just start with, you know, a funder gets up here and, and people often scratch their, hand, their heads. Like, what exactly do you do? Like, do you sit in the back room with the vault behind you and just kind of dole out uh, $100 bills? No, no, we don't. But um, there's a lot of different uh, thinking around what people, like, what funders do. Um, you know, what my friends think I do is sit in the back room and, and dole out the $100 bills. But, but, you know, what my mom thinks I do is something more like Bill Gates. But then the other side, well, what they think I do, what society thinks I do, what I think I do, but really, that's what I do at the desk with all the paper. So Real Estate Foundation in BC, we uh, commissioned a poll a couple years ago with uh, Vancouver Foundation on uh, sustainable food systems and, and land. And okay, we, we looked at about 1,700 uh, residents in BC and, you know, 19 times out of 20, there was a 2.4% chance of, uh, of error. But, the, the question that we asked people, and I'm just going to focus on one question, was, you know, what is your concern with agriculture in British Columbia? Number one concern, you see it right there, land. People in BC care about the land. They care about their food. And actually, they care about the farmers. They trust farmers in BC. So those take-home messages are, are pretty important and relevant to today's conversation. So I, I was uh, going to put a top 10 list together and I was uh, speaking to a millennial in my office and she said to me, uh, and I said, yeah, I'm, I, she said, what, what are you working on? And I said, oh, I'm going to do, you know, this top 10 list that Dave Letterman used to do. And, and she looked at me and she said, Dave Letterman, who, who's he? So anyway, um, then I told her about, you know, late night TV and, you know, Jay Leno and John Carson. And then there was Dave Letterman. Anyway. I'm going to do a top five list uh, because we don't have a lot of time. What we are looking for, what I look for in funding, personal champion. And that's often harder to, to find than you think. 
with ecosystem services as an example, and uh, Zender, I'm not trying to pump up your tires here, okay? But when we can find somebody who can speak in academic circles about ecosystem services and talk about implementation, that gets an audience. Because you know what? The academics, they, they, they can do the concepts, they can write the papers, but when you talk about implementation, people will listen. And then we find somebody who can also talk to farmers about ecosystem services in a legitimate way because guess what? British Columbia, British Columbians trust farmers. That's really important. And you start looking at all of the, the barriers and the obstacles of trying to start a new initiative with new ideas. And guess what, folks? Most of us don't like change. We are looking for personal champions. At the Real Estate Foundation, we attempt to address systemic issues rather than band-aids and symptoms. And perhaps we can take a slightly longer term view than other actors in society. The government, they're on a four year cycle trying to get elected in the next election. And, and so sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, sometimes have more short term responses. But as a funder, we can take a step back and start looking at some root issues. And we believe that ecosystem services is one appropriate response that starts looking at some of these root issues. Integrated thinking. Ecosystem services, and you've heard it all uh, already this morning, it addresses climate change, the soil, the land, drainage issues, pollination, uh, biodiversity, wildlife, food security. It involves all of these different things in a holistic matter, manner. And that's really important because guess what? Our institutes, institutions often try to dissect things into very little things and it's called silo thinking. And that's why we end up very fragmented in our responses. But ecosystem services has a way to pull all, the, all of these together and really start to deal with the issue at hand in a practical manner. One of my favorite uh, involving this project, though, is around financial sustainability. I mean, as a funder, we, and as uh, in philanthropy, we can fund, um, you know, a project for a year or two or three, but we are really, we see ourselves as, as catalytic. We are catalytic in our in our response because we are looking for that sustainable model. And a lot of, a lot of pro, um, programs, they don't have that. And guess what, I get it. Uh, nonprofit is a not for profit, right? That's why they keep coming back to institutions like ourselves for funding to be able to go out and do a lot of the uh, important work in society. But when we see a financial model being created and we see local communities getting involved and a big shout out to the township of uh, Langley which I think Dave will probably mention about getting behind a program like this with tax dollars all of a sudden we start paying attention because in a few years you're not going to need us because if we can be creating these sustainable models where they can start to evolve and revolve around, um, around the program. I want to also just talk uh, quickly about collaboration because, you know, we talk about, yeah, we got to collaborate. We got to collaborate. And collaboration is actually hard to do. It's hard to do well. We can, and if we look at the, um, 
the top, I mean, information sharing, which is really what we're doing today, this morning, it's, it's pretty easy. But as we move along the continuum of collaboration towards alignment, coordination, strategic coordination, and finally to collective impact where we are strategically moving in the same direction, we have a shared vision and we are making uh, deeper impacts. This is where we want to move. And a, a program like Ecosystem Services, uh, Paid Ecosystem Services, has the potential for various stakeholders to get behind and to start moving and shifting this rudder on the Titanic. But it's hard work. Another thing that I, I um, wanted to mention, one thing that we are really interested in is, and Nancy talked about pilot projects. Pilot projects are great. They're, they show an example, they demonstrate things work. But one, one area that I'm really interested in is how do we scale up? And if you look at this graph, I mean, right now we're in the 2.5%, okay? We are the innovators, people working on this. How do we start moving up that graph and getting into the early adopters and the early majority? How do we take these pilot projects and start to scale them up. And that really interests me because I think for real widespread and permanent change, we need to figure this out. And it's not easy. But if we can together come up with a common vision, define the problem, and then start developing testing and refining solutions, we can move up the scale, and it happens very quickly. Just look at consumer goods. 1984, this thing was this big, and it cost $2,000. In 2007, Steve Jobs, uh, in 77 days, sold a mil million of these, and now there are uh, one out of two people in the, no, sorry, one out of four people in the world have a smartphone in 2015. It, ha it can happen quickly if we put our minds to it. So I want to leave you with a, a, a couple last thoughts because I like being pro provocative. What's in a name? I would argue or suggest maybe we've got the name wrong. Ecosystem services. What does that mean? What does that mean to the public? Perhaps we'll have time later on today to, to discuss this more. But I would suggest we might want to think about changing the name. Because for the public, they don't understand it. And that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem in the way we communicate. And Nancy mentioned, and I think we really need to spend more time on this, what is the narrative around ecosystem services? What is the storyline? And I would say it starts with one person, one farmer, one field, one stream. And that's your story. And we've been talking a lot today about the what. What is ecosystem services? We have to switch that and talk about the why. Because guess what? That's what the public's going to care about. They're not going to care about the what. They care about the why. One example that I um, pulled out from Alberta, and this is a, a program that works on uh, riparian habitat restoration and preservation. What's the name of the program? Cows and Fish. Get it? 
And that's why I think I would like to have more dialogue about how we communicate and that names matter. So to sum up, we look for innovation and leadership. We look for strong partnerships. We look for financial sustainability and longevity. And we look for ways that, that programs, initiatives can be scaled up. And we need your help in doing that because I think we're onto something here. And as we've heard, everyone else in the world, a lot of the world is doing this. Canada is a bit of a laggard, but we can catch up really quickly. Thank you.